Hello and welcome to everyone. My name is Jim Shearer. I'm the Key Account Manager in the UK for Babcock & Wilcox, covering the aftermarket services. I'd like to talk to you about the Fulborna Waste Energy Plant in Sweden, where we recently conducted a number of upgrades. Part of the presentation will take you through the key drivers that the client had, the process which Babcock & Wilcox went through, and improvements which were actually made. We have designed and built hundreds of waste energy and biomass plants around the world, but here in Europe we have built around 25 since 2005, several being in the UK. However, our core technologies are also used in other UK plants which are not BW OEM. The key challenges that we see regularly are plant operations, NOx and carbon intensity. With the operation side of it, clients often ask us how they can increase throughput, increase availability and reduce downtime. With regards to emissions, there's a lot of interest at the moment on the, the NOx levels, the ammonia slip and the consumables for SNCR. There is also a heavy focus at the moment on carbon intensity to reduce CO2 emissions and of course the future carbon tax obligations. So let me introduce you now to the Fulborna Waste Energy Plant in Sweden. The plant was commissioned in 2013. BMW upgraded the plant to 113% thermal input in 2018 and then upgraded the SNCR system in 2020. The Fulborna plant is one that you should keep in mind. They are currently investigating to be the first carbon capture uh, for waste energy plants in Sweden. So keep an eye out for that one. The Fulborna plant is a combined heat and power waste energy plant. The requirements were to increase the capacity as much as possible. The objectives were to increase the feed-in tariff revenues, increase the gate fee revenues and reduce the NOx and emission levels because this offered a very attractive tax saving benefit which I'll talk about in more detail in, in the later slides. As part of an upgrade review one of the key areas is to conduct a bottleneck analysis. This will cover the grate, thermal and mechanical loads, the safety valves, the feeding pumps, the combustion fans, the air preheater, venturis, the control valves and the boiler with regards to velocity and temperature. We have to investigate the weak point in the system. One of the interesting points we discovered at the Fulborna plant when conducting this evaluation was that we found out that the third party SNCR system that had been originally installed in the system was not operating as it should have been and as the operator believed it was. OK, so let's have a look at the plant itself in a bit more detail. We can go through where the upgrades were made. So the illustration shows the main areas that we had a look at. We were able to increase the capacity and the fuel flow by extending the third pass tube baffles. We changed the second rear system, we installed a new water injection system and we applied in canal on the back side of the first pass. We were able to increase the fuel input up to 113%. On the boiler, we made several changes to handle this increased fuel flow. The tube baffles in the third pass were extended. By installing the longer baffles in the third pass, we ensured the temperature did not go too high before the convection section. The second rear system was changed to achieve a better burnout by extending the time for particles inside the furnace. And a water injection system was installed for better combustion control overall. So why did we use Inconel versus Refractory? Inconel helps cool the area down. It helps to avoid slag formation and dripping. With the higher temperatures, there is a possibility of slag stalagmites forming. So Inconel was welded on the back side of the first pass to avoid slag from dripping down onto the end of the grate. Inconel on the back of the first pass was also deemed to be the best value to the client. 
Combustion of municipal waste results in an environment within the boiler that is extremely corrosive. Corrosion in waste fire boilers is primarily caused by chloride compounds that deposit on the furnace and convection pass tubes in combination with high temperatures. Proper protection from corrosion in these areas is paramount to plant availability and the successful long-term operation of these key boiler components. A variety of solutions have been developed and used over the years to address lower furnace corrosion. One solution was the Inconel Weld Overlay. This was pioneered in waste fire boilers and has gained general acceptance since the early 2000s on the lower furnace walls of large mass fire boilers. The good corrosion resistance, the high thermal conductivity, the metallurgical bond to the base tubes and membrane bars and the wear resistance have made Inconel Overlay the primary approach for lower furnace corrosion protection and new designs. Babcock and Wilcox pioneered the use of Inconel as a solution to the lower furnace corrosion problem, as well as other corrosion susceptible areas. As early as 1986, the lower furnace tubes in a refuse derived fuel fire boiler in the United States was covered with Inconel weld overlay material. This overlay effectively minimised corrosion, and based on this experience, the industry followed Babcock and Wilcox's lead. Inconel weld overlay was subsequently field applied to the lower furnace areas of a number of operating boilers. The photo on the left shows the typical areas where we can apply Inconel cladding in a waste energy boiler. So one of the key tools that our technical team use when evaluating a plant upgrade is to conduct a CFD analysis this is an effective method for evaluating the different design alternatives that would be otherwise too expensive, time consuming or impossible to test. A CFD analysis provides a detailed representation of the combustion process, the flow field and heat transfer. The detailed chemical and physical information obtained for plants by the CFD analysis helps us create the very best solution for our customer's plant. Using CFD analysis also allows us to measure the first and second pass temperature differences. This CFD tool allows us to hit the temperature window we need when modelling it with our Volumix control system. Of course, there are also guarantees for ammonia consumption to consider. In Sweden, there is a tax payable for every kilogram of NOx, so it is desirable to reduce this amount as much as possible. It's rewarded at the end of the year for every kilogram of NOx under the average. So some of the challenges that we had with the Fullborn upgrade is the low NOx guarantee of under 95mg. We had a large boiler cross section to consider which made it harder to penetrate the main flue gas flow. With the boiler upgrades that increased the flue gas flow and gave a low retention time in the SNCR window. There was insufficient fuel mixing in the bunker giving us large temperature variations in the grate and up into the first pass and the NOx swings. The solutions we identified were the increase of the number of lances to give us a better coverage, the rebuilding of the mixing cabinet, the upgrading of the control system, and the new IR pyrometers with an improved hookup system. We also delivered extensive training to the site personnel on the new system that was installed. As part of the upgrade, there was additional lances installed. The image on the left shows that there were only a few lances there, so injecting would end up in non-optimal areas, which would increase the risk of ammonia slip and slow or no reaction at lower temperatures. The image in the middle shows a new lance configuration. This allowed us to focus on optimal temperature regions. The boiler itself was 10 metres wide, so it gave us a very differing temperature profile. So that, together with the improved control system and the mixing cabinets, made a huge difference. With the new lance locations and the number over four levels, we were able to optimise where to inject and when it was required. BMW have developed algorithms to control the injection levels of ammonia through all locations to allow us to optimise the reactions of the ammonia with the flue gases in the boiler. This allows us to control the temperatures to be around 950 degrees Celsius, which is the optimum temperature. The fully updated SNCR system 
was installed during the summer of 2020. This chart shows the operational data from September 2019 to July 2020. The red line shows the target or desired NOx levels and we can see the large variations above this line. That shows us that the control of the plant is not optimal. Following the upgrade of the SNCR system, the performance was monitored. The period shown is from October 2020 to August 2021. As mentioned earlier, in Sweden, the operator pays for NOx levels produced and revenue or cost depends on that performance. For Borna achieved a NOx reduction of 27%. That equated to a tax saving of around £10,250 per month or around £123,000 for the first year. Part of the plant operator training mentioned earlier is to highlight the importance of maintaining the lances to ensure there's no blockages and checking for corrosion. Routine maintenance is required and it does make a difference. The maintenance plans and the strategies were part of the BMW upgrade deliverables. If the plant does not keep a focus on the maintenance and routine checks, it will not have the improvements they require. BMW SNCR systems are designed specifically for each boiler, hence the reason we use CFD analysis. It's not just an add-on. The average emission levels are shown there on the top right, but looking at the graph, the variations are significantly lower. So you need to track your NOx or ammonia. Our set point is always the ammonia, and it is well known that the formation of NOx is connected to the amount of accessible oxygen. There are many reasons why clients come to Babcock & Wilcox to look at upgrade possibilities and conducting feasibility studies, etc. Some of these reasons are shown on this slide. If you are interested in any more information, our contact details are available and there is case studies and technical brochures available on the Babcock.com website. Thank you for your time.